It doesn't look so good. We got a leak. thread on this. There we go. That's one, the other one. I'm just going to have to imagine what's going on here. I'm not shifting the camera. Ah, before we do that, something I've forgotten. Take this off. There we go. That's the easy bit done. Now for the tear down and let's see what's hiding inside. I just want to say at this point that uh, I watched Lance Bundy's video on how to do this um, over at uh, Bundy Bear Shed channel on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description. The guy's brilliant. He really steps through it. Um, shows you how it's done. This is what I'm uh, basing, my, basing my ham fisted effort on. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. Go and uh, check out how the expert does it. Here we go. Oh, where do you want to look at the crud on that? Look. Now, as far as I remember, you push in, turn. There we go, and it unhooks it. There we are. There's what we got. Diaphragm. Okay. What we're looking at in there. I want to see the shite in there, man. All right, well, I'm going to go and clean that lot up. And there's solid lumps of mud in there. Interesting to see. This is the new spring. This is the old one. You can see the difference in size there, how much the, the old spring's compressed. You can see there. It's, uh, I don't know what it is. A quarter of an inch difference. Something like that. The challenge is to get the old ones out, new ones in. Let's see how we go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they do not want to come. They just sort of crimped in with uh, with a punch, but these all right. I came out. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
it's too big. Okay, so what I've done here, I couldn't find a socket the right size. I got a bit of copper pipe that was uh, slightly undersized, cut these slits in, you can see, and then kind of clip that in. And now I'm hoping that this will work. Kind of, kind of bop it in here. I've got a soft blow hammer. Thing out the way. That actually seems to be working okay. And that's in there. You see that? Looks pretty good. It just it seems to round in pretty tough. See my hand more than anything for a bit. There we go. The brute force and ignorance. This chap's going in the other way up. That looks pretty good. That'll be the next trick. Hitting this bugger lined up and clearly, clearly doesn't want to line up. They're bloody way off, aren't they? Okay, I've got something of a quandary here. <clears throat> You look, the only two holes that line up leave like a huge overlap. So initially I was just going to shrug my shoulders, say, well, that's China for you, and then um, cut them down. <clears throat> However, this is a diaphragm. It's got to have enough material to move up and down. My fear is that if I cut these holes, new holes, such that the diaphragm is then flat inside, it's going to put an undue stress on the rubberized material. So what I'm doing is I'm going to compare it with the old one. You can see, I don't know if you can see, it has a kind of a curve there. It has a curve there. It shows that there's spare material in there, presumably to give it some kind of bellows effect, you know, so it can move. You see that? We see on this camera a bit better. You see there's a bit of a curve there. So there's obviously some spare material in there. With this one, the new one, it doesn't have that curve. It's just completely flat. What I'm going to try and do is do a, a test fit to start with. And just see how it lines up. Right, so that's hooked on. Now let's see if it's even possible to bolt that over the top. I don't think it will be. But let's just see what happens. Okay, that seems to be making reasonable contact all the way around. There's no crumpling or anything. And hopefully the extra material inside gives it room to
gives it room to be a diaphragm. Put the new seal in. Okay, so fuel pump has been uh, installed. Let's um, let's see if we can start her up. Now let's check for leaks. That doesn't look so good. We got a leak. Yeah, I don't know if you can see down there. Just there, there's a leak. Not good. Not good. Looks like we're putting a Chinese pump in after all. Okay, so we've uh, kind of got the tractor equivalent of the walk of shame here. That um, rebuild obviously didn't work. So we got a new pump. You can see here, China's best. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna chuck the new pump in and then conduct a post-mortem on the old pump to try and figure out why it didn't work. So I have, of course, shut off the, um, the fuel tap at the tank before doing this. We'll doubtless still get um, fuel everywhere. Sorry. Up you in the face there. And for this.
right. I'm not convinced about that oil just because I think that oil pressure should be higher for when it's cold. Um, I'm running thicker oil in her anyway, so in the past I've seen it going much higher. So um, we're going to do the sniff test now. I can get the bloody camera there. There's the draw, the um, dipstick. Let's just have a little sniff. Ooh, too bad. And then it wouldn't, would it? Let's have a little. Excuse me, I have to do this off camera. Well, it doesn't smell too bad. And. Yeah, no, that, that oil's no, no good. I can feel it juddering between my fingers. So that'll need to be an oil change, which is a complete sod because, as you can see, it's a brand new oil filter. At least now I've got this quick adapter so I can use standard oil filters on it. I don't have to go through the, uh, the balls ache we had to do before. But that will be its second oil change in... Uh, in about as many weeks, which is a bit of a bore, but there we go. Such is life. You know what it's like when you buy a new kit. I don't think I'm going to bother running a post-mortem on that pump, the old pump. I'm pretty sure the um, diaphragm is at fault. It was a lot thinner than the one I took off. I mean, like a third as thin as the one I took off. And the holes in it didn't really line up. I had to budget to, to fit. Plus, it didn't come with a rubber bung on the end of that spring. Um, I couldn't use the old one because it wouldn't have fitted um, because the diaphragm had a different shape shaft on it. So I'm assuming that that's probably where the problem lies. I was kind of tempted to pull apart this new one that had come in, but I kind of figured leave, leave well alone. So we're going to run it like that for a while. Fingers crossed uh, there's no leak. I'll run it for a bit. I might carry on using this old oil, um, bring her up to temperature, and then just take that oil pump, the new, sorry, the new fuel pump off, and uh, just see at the back whether I can sniff or feel any any um, diesel coming through. But I think, as things stand, I'm going to call that a wrap on this one. I've spent far too long on it anyway, and. As well as the fuel pump, I've just discovered a new little problem. There we go. Another brand new addition that uh, hasn't worked out so well. That's gone flat as a pancake after one outing. So either it's picked up a thorn or it's not seating on the bead properly. So uh, go and bung some air in that and see how far we get. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thank you for tuning in. I'll try and make it a bit quicker for the next one next time. Next up, we've got um, the CAV injector pump rebuild um, and the hydraulic pump rebuild. Hydraulic pump rebuild, that, that was a bit of a saga, but uh, that's actually all working now, which I'm quite pleased with. So until then, remember to uh, like and subscribe if this is your kind of gig, and I'll see you on the next one. Looks like the cat's found his new home. Hello, mate. Come on, then. You want a rough house? You want a rough house? Pussy cat. Yay, 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 yay. Yay, 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 yay. Come on, then. Come on, then. Let's have it.